The screech echoed across the peaks of the Grey Mountains. It was a sound of raw, animal agony that set the crows to flight and the horses to pulling at their tethers. The echo of the screech faded and the cockatrice slumped, serpentile tail lashing, its unnatural ichor staining the harsh soil. A hoof stamped down, pulverizing the dying beast's skull and its writhing body abruptly went still. The hippogriff shook itself and snapped its beak angrily. It reared up on its hooves, flapping its wings as it clawed at the air with the talons on its forelimbs. It squalled at the cheering crowd, and Felix Jaeger heard the roar, hatred in the beast's voice and shuddered. Nasty beast, he said. Aye, Gottrick Gunnison grunted, his one good eye locked on the hippogriff. Are you sure about this? Aye, the dwarf said again. The slayer's tattooed frame trembled with what might have been eagerness, and his pace, never very swift, had nonetheless become inexorable. We don't need the money that badly, Gotrick, Felix said, following the dwarf down through the rickety stands. The arena attached to the mountain trading post was made of convenient stones and hastily assembled planking, and it groaned from the weight of the crowd. They were a mix of the worst, from either side of the Gizero Gap and there were accents from as far north as Kislev and as far south as Tobaro. The arena itself was simply a great crater of stone and wood with a thick woven net mounted over it. Gotrick turned and glared at Felix. It's not about the money, manling, he rasped. The haft of his axe creaked as his grip tightened. Felix stepped back. Gotrek this, he began. Gotrek turned and stamped away his fiery crest of greased hair marking his path as effectively as a shark's fin. His massive hands, elbows and shoulders cleared his way through the crowd. It's perhaps not the wisest course, Felix finished lamely. He looked down at the betting slip in his hand and shrugged. If the Slayer was determined to pit himself against the beast, there was little the poet could do to stop him. They had been on their way to Bretonia when the first stories of the so-called King of the Gap had reached them. Beast baiting, distasteful as it was, was quite common on both sides of the Gap, and the longevity of the beast in question was measured in days, if not hours. The King of the Gap had survived for three years. The Hippogriff squalled again and leapt into the air, striking the net that kept it trapped. It was a magnificent beast, despite the chaotic amalgamation of equine, avian, and feline qualities. Old scars covered his once glossy coat, and the vibrant crimson plumage was dulled by age and grime. It dropped low and drove a massive shoulder into the heavy boards that separated it from the stands, snarling and squawking. Long hunting spears were jabbed through the boards, driving the beast back. It sank to the arena and galloped around the circumference, trumpeting a challenge. That cry was answered by the blast of a hunting horn as the wooden portcullis was raised and Gotrek stalked into the ring. Hippogriff and Slayer eyed each other for a moment. Gotrek raised his axe. The beast broke into a gallop. Gotrek dodged to the side, far quicker than his heavy frame would seem to allow, as the Hippogriff's claws gouged the stone. A wing snapped out, nearly bowling the dwarf over. Gotrek's axe chopped down, shaving a tuft of hair from the monster's tail. A hoof shot out, catching Gotrek on the shoulder, and Felix winced as he heard an audible pop. The crowd bayed. Gotrek grabbed his dislocated shoulder and snapped it back into place with barely a glimmer of effort. The hard-faced guards who worked for the trading post began to look unhappy. The outcome wasn't in doubt but Felix wondered whether he and Gotrick would live to collect their winnings. The beast had made the owners of this trading post money for three years. They weren't going to be happy when Gotrick butchered it. He loosened his sword in its sheath. The Hippogriff shrieked and spun, lunging for the Slayer. Again, Gotrick ducked, throwing himself between its legs. He popped up behind it, and Felix tensed. This was it. Except that it wasn't. Gotrick grabbed a handful of the Hippogriff's hair and jugged himself up onto its back. 
It began to thrash and buck, screaming wildly. Gotrick clung tightly to it. The crowd didn't seem to know what to make of it. Neither did Felix. His heart leapt into his throat when the Hippogriff thrust itself into the air. Its wings beat like thunder as it rolled upwards. Gotrick held on with stubborn determination. The creature smashed itself into the nets and began to squall. Gotrick, trapped between the beast and the net, struggled to free his axe. The betting slip crumpled in Felix's hand and his mouth was dry. Gotrex's axe sprang free and sliced through the net. The crowd gave a collective moan as the Hippogriff hurtled into the sky with a triumphant scream. Gotrick tumbled to the arena floor. Felix drew his sword and sliced through the board separating it from the stands. He leapt down, rushing forward as the Slayer struggled to his feet. The crowd was in chaos as the guards struggled to regain control, and a number of the latter were hurrying towards them, murder stamped on their faces. It looked like all bets were off. Gotrek, what did you do? Felix said, as he and the dwarf faced the approaching guards. We should all be free to seek our own doom, manling! Gotrek ran his thumb across his axe and squeezed a drop of blood from his thumb, flicking it at the approaching guards as he grinned wildly. Now, let's go help these fools with theirs, eh?